These are the pyramids of Egypt, the most majestic and well-known structures in the world. Though today they have become one of the most popular tourist destinations, their true purpose and meaning extend far beyond their astonishing appearance. For this, Egyptian engineering was key to its accomplishment, yet despite multiple pieces of evidence, science has not yet explained how the construction process was carried out, leaving us still wondering, how were they built? Or who built them? Next, we will tell you how they were built according to scientific sources. So stay tuned, but first, I invite you to like and subscribe. The pyramids were not mere architectural structures, they were funerary monuments built to house the pharaohs and Egyptian nobles on their journey to the afterlife. The three famous pyramids of Giza underwent a complex elaboration. Their construction had a hard and frenetic construction period between 2550 and 2490 BC. Each of the pyramids was built by different pharaohs, the tallest for Khufu, Khafer, and Menkor. The Pyramid of Khufu this is the largest of the three pyramids of Giza and is a marvel in terms of precision and design. Its construction involved mobilizing huge limestone blocks from nearby and farther quarries. A key innovation was the use of earth ramps, believed to have been built around the pyramid in a spiral, allowing the transport of stone blocks to the upper levels. Moreover, the precise orientation of the Great Pyramid to the cardinal points demonstrates a profound knowledge of astronomy. The Pyramid of Khafer Although slightly smaller than that of Khufu, the Pyramid of Khafer is distinguished by the preservation of some of its original casing at the top. This pyramid also presented challenges in terms of extracting and transporting granite from Aswan, which was used for the inner chambers. The innovation here lies in the adaptation and improvement of the techniques used in the previous pyramid, optimizing the construction process. The Pyramid of Menkor Though the smallest of the Giza pyramids, the Pyramid of Menkor is unique due to the variety of materials used. The base of this pyramid is made of limestone, but the upper part had a casing of red granite, representing a challenge in terms of combining materials and construction techniques. One of the most revealing findings in this regard is the Diary of Mirror. This set of records, also known as Papyrus Jarf A and B, dates from around 2500 BC and is considered one of the oldest written text papyri ever found. It was discovered in 2013 by a French mission led by Pierre Talet from the Sorbonne University in a cave in Wadi Aljarf, near the Red Sea coast. The primary purpose of the mastabas was to serve as visible monuments for the Egyptian nobility they housed. Although the actual funerary chambers were underground, and not visible to the public from outside the structure. Inside the mastaba, the funerary chambers were cut deeply into the bedrock and were lined with wood. Technically, mastabas preceded the original pyramid. Indeed, pyramids developed directly from mastabas. The first pyramid was actually a kind of stepped pyramid, built by stacking one mastaba directly on top of another slightly larger one. This process was repeated several times to create the initial pyramid. The genius behind this monumental work is Imhotep, who is recognized as the first architect in history. Under his direction, the most remarkable construction of Saqqara, south of the city of Memphis, was erected. This stepped pyramid became the prototype for the future pyramids of Giza and other Egyptian pyramids. What makes this pyramid special is that it was the first to be built using cut stone, rather than mud brick, as was common at that time. The stepped pyramid of Djoser marked a turning point in Egyptian architecture. From this design, future pyramids evolved into smoother, more polished structures. The stepped pyramid was the first step towards creating the iconic smooth pyramids that would be erected in Giza and other locations in Egypt. This architectural evolution reflects the constant innovation and adaptation of the Egyptians in their quest for perfection and transcendence. Before the construction of the Pyramid of Djoser, royal tombs consisted of underground chambers covered by a mudbrick structure in the shape of a truncated pyramid, known as a mastaba. The Pyramid of Djoser, in contrast, is made of stone and consists of six mastabas superimposed, one on top of the other. These mastabas represent five revisions and developments of the original plan, 
culminating in a pyramid with six levels or steps. The design of the pyramid underwent several changes and modifications throughout its construction. Silicious limestone blocks, extracted from nearby quarries, were joined with mortar. The exterior of the pyramid was clad with fine-grained limestone, resulting in an imposing structure that reflected the grandeur and vision of ancient Egypt. The construction of the pyramids began with the extraction of stone blocks, mainly limestone. These blocks were extracted from nearby quarries, and it has been discovered that the main material used for construction was limestone, whether squared or uncut. Additionally, wood was used, probably for tools and possibly to create temporary structures that aided in the construction process. Once extracted, the transportation of these enormous stone blocks presented another challenge. It is believed that the ancient Egyptians used large wooden sleds to move the blocks. These sleds slid over dirt roads, and a trick that might have been used to facilitate movement was wetting the sand on the road. By doing so, friction was reduced, allowing the blocks to be moved with less effort. Moreover, large teams of workers were likely used to move these blocks. Contrary to the popular belief that slaves were responsible for this arduous task, evidence suggests that it was skilled and well-fed workers who carried out the construction. According to a study published in the journal Physical Review Letters, wetting the sand of the Egyptian desert allowed reducing friction enough to need half the force to transport the heavy stone blocks on sleds. This technique, which might seem trivial at first glance, has profound implications in construction logistics. By reducing friction, less labor would be required, which in turn could speed up the construction process. The idea behind this method is that by wetting the sand, water droplets create capillary bridges between the sand grains, increasing their stiffness and preventing them from piling up in front of the sled. This facilitates the sled sliding over the sand, reducing resistance and, therefore, the amount of force needed to move it. In addition to ramps, it is believed that the ancient Egyptians used counterweights. These pulley and counterweight systems would help lift the stone blocks, especially in the final stages of construction when the ramps were no longer practical. Other theories suggest that the Egyptians might have used a combination of techniques, including internal spiral ramps and linear ramps. These theories are based on archaeological evidence and ancient records, like the Diary of Mirror, which mentions the transportation of limestone to Giza. The construction of a pyramid required meticulous planning and detailed labor organization. Workers were grouped into teams, each with specific tasks. These teams were composed of architects, engineers, masons, sculptors, laborers, and many other specialists. Each group had a leader or supervisor who was responsible for coordinating activities and ensuring that deadlines were met. Architects and engineers were in charge of designing the pyramid structure, calculating dimensions, and planning construction techniques. These professionals were highly valued in Egyptian society and enjoyed a special status. Masons and sculptors, on the other hand, were responsible for shaping the stone blocks and decorating the pyramid's inner chambers. These workers were experts in their craft and possessed specific skills that allowed them to perform their work with precision, tunnels, chambers, and internal passages. The pyramids were not simply monolithic structures, they housed a complex network of chambers and passages designed for religious and funerary purposes. These internal spaces were essential for burial practices and the ancient Egyptians' beliefs about the afterlife. Ascending and descending passages. These passages connected the funerary chambers with the outside and had symbolic meanings. The ascending passage, for example, could represent the Pharaoh's journey to heaven. Some believe that the ancient Egyptians possessed advanced technologies that have been lost over time. While it is true that the Egyptians were talented engineers and architects, there is no evidence that they used technologies unknown to us. Instead, they used ingenious techniques and simple tools to achieve their impressive constructions. There is no doubt about the greatness behind the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians. However, Archaeologists are still searching for more evidence about the construction of the pyramids, especially regarding the techniques, tools, and people involved in the process. And do you think there are other ways in which the Egyptians built the pyramids? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watch.
please subscribe for support the channel. If you like the video, give it a like and share with your friends.